Hello and welcome to this tutorial. If you just watched the subnetting class C networks and you still want to have some more fun, well you've come to the right place because now we're going to subnet class A and class B networks. So in the last video we talked about how there are a limited number of subnetting options for a class C network and that's because the fourth octet is the host octet and there are eight bits in an octet and we can only play around with six of them because we always leave two for the host portion. So in terms of subnetting a class C network there's only so much we can do and we went through those options. Well our options expand quite a bit when we look at class A and class B networks and the reason reason why is if we look at the default subnet mask for a class A network, for example, we can see we have 255.0.0.0 and the host portion is the second, third, and fourth octets. That means we have options, we have room to play around with with all these bits. So there are 24, but you have to subtract 2, so you have 22 bits to play around with when you're subnetting Class A networks. Likewise, with a Class B network, you don't have as many options as a Class A, but you have a lot more than a Class C. Here, you've got the third and the fourth octets dedicated to the host portion, so that's where we would be stealing bits for the subnet, and that would be 16 minus 2, so we have 14 bits to play with. So we're going to take a look at subnetting a Class A and a Class B network to give you an idea of what that looks like and, and the motions we go through there. And then when we're done, you'll see how similar it is to a Class C network. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to use the 10.0.0.0 network number for our example. And here we have the default subnet mask for a Class A network. Let's go ahead and look at that in binary. It's always good to know where we're starting. So there are no surprises here. The first octet is all ones. That's your network portion. Octets two, three, and four, all zeros. That's our host portion. So for this example, we're going to steal one bit from the host portion to create our subnet. So that means the second octet is going to change because we always move with consecutive ones in our subnet mask. And now it looks like this, one and then seven zeros. In decimal, that equates to 128. Again, know your decimal values for each of the bit positions. Great, so our new subnet mask looks like this then, 255.128.0.0, and in slash notation, all we do is count up all the bits. So in the first octet, there are eight, and now we added one more, so we have a slash nine. If any of this uh, work that we've done so far is not clear, go back and review the Class C subnetting tutorial um, and then practice this a bit. Um, you need to be very uh, comfortable with getting this far. Okay? Now the rest of the steps are just about figuring out, well, how many uh, subnets do we create with this new subnet mask and how big is each one? All right? So moving forward, we use the same formulas that we use when we are subnetting class C's. And this is important to note. All the formulas remain the same. So once you learn it, you can apply it to any type of network. That's the beauty here. Um, once you figure out how everything works, you can subnet anything. So here, we took one bit from the host portion. So that goes into our formula. Two to the power of one equals two. We're creating two subnets. So when we apply this subnet mask to our class A network, we create two subnets. Great. But how big is each of these subnets going to be? Well, this gets a little bit tricky when you talk about class A's and class B's because there are so many uh, hosts in each of these. There's so many host bits available. So the formula 2 to the power of 23, because now we have 23 host bits left over after we stole just one for the subnet portion, gives us a little over 8 million hosts. Well, that's easy to understand, but how do you actually write that out in the decimal? 
So for instance, how do we figure out that this is the range if we start with the uh, first subnet we created, 10.0.0.0, how do you equate the little over 8 million addresses into the decimal format? Well, there's a quick and easy trick for you to figure out to use in order to figure this out quickly. It goes like this. We change the second octet in our, sub <clears throat> in our subnet mask, and it went from 0 to 128. So what we do is we take 256, and whatev when whatever our octet, our interesting octet as they call it, has changed to, which was 128, we just subtract. So here it gives us 100. And 28. So now we know the chunk, uh, our interval of subnets, in order to figure out where the first subnet begins and where the second subnet begins. So our second subnet begins at 10.128.0.0 because our total range is from 0 to 127, which we see here, 0 to 127. Remember, you count 0 as an actual number. That's why this is not, this is not 128. The new one begins on 128. Okay, so that's a very quick trick in order to figure out your interval that you have to count in order to figure out all the different subnet numbers. Here it's kind of easy, there are only two. And here we have it. Finally, we talked about hosts and valid hosts. Well, here the formula remains the same, 2 to the power of 23, but this time we just subtract 2, one for the subnet number and one for the broadcast IP, and now we get 8,388,606 as opposed to 608. Now, the third octet here and the fourth octet, when you apply the, this, this quick and simple method to figure out where your subnets begin, um, you just fill out the remaining two octets with 255 in order to figure out the maximum range. Okay, we'll go ahead and now look at a class B, and we're going to do the same thing again to flush out some of these, uh, these formulas. Before we begin the class B subnetting, this is just a brief layout of all of the different subnet masks you can create when you're subnetting a class A network. You can see there are quite a few, and if you start with a slash 9 as we did, you can work your way all the way up to a slash 30. We've abbreviated some of them because there are just so many to write out. So a good practice approach here is to uh, start with a slash 9 and then try slash 10 and an 11 and just keep incrementing by 1 in your subnet portion until you're really comfortable. Then you can jump around a bit. If you've gotten, if you've worked your way up to a slash 13, then jump to a slash 17 and a slash 23 uh, and just keep practicing these methods and soon this will just be like second nature to you. All right? We're going to use 172.16 as our class B network. And here you can see the default subnet mask, 255.255. Let's look at that in binary. Again, it's always good to know where we're starting. And this time, let's go ahead and steal three bits from the host portion. So those three there. So our third octet changes. It now has a new look. And that means it has a new decimal value of 224. Our new subnet mask is therefore going to look like this, 255.255, and then the new third octet, 224.0. The slash notation is a slash 19, because we had eight ones plus another eight ones, part of the default mask, and then we added three more to give us 19. Well, how many subnets can we create? We know we stole these three bits from the host portion, so 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. By applying this subnet mask then to this network, we can go ahead and create eight subnets. Let's now figure out how big each one of these subnets will be. We have 13 bits left over in the host portion, these here. 
We started off with 16, but we stole 3, so now we have 13. 2 to the power of 13 gives us a little bit more than 8,000 hosts per subnet. So these are still pretty big subnets. Now the, the somewhat tricky part, as we mentioned with class A and class B, is how do you figure out the range? Well, here I wrote out the range, and then let's work backwards and figure out how we got to this point. So 172.16.0.0, that subnet, in order to accommodate 8,192 hosts, goes all the way up to 172.16.31.255. So that's the entire range of IP addresses created in one subnet. The quick way to figure that out is we take a look at the third octet. It used to be 0, and then it became 224. So this is the octet we're interested in, and our quick formula is this. 256 minus 224, the new octet value, gives us a value of 32. So it is in increments of 32 that we have our new subnets. So that makes sense. If we look at it now, we started at 0, and the very next one will be 32. Again, if we add 32 again, we have 64, and we can keep going. Next, we'll have 96, and so on and so forth, until we create 8 subnets. So once you know where each subnet begins, then all you have to do in order to figure out the range is to fill up everything until you get to each of the octets until you get to the next subnet number. So for this subnet number here, we know that we max out at 32 because that's where the next one starts. So our third octet then has to become 31. That's as high as we can go. Now the fourth octet, that is still part of our range, so we put the maximum value there, which is 255. Okay, so go ahead and play with this a little bit um, as you subnet class A's and class B's, um, and you'll get more and more familiar with this. Finally, the valid hosts, 2 to the power of 13 again, but this time we subtract 2, 1 for the subnet number, and 1 for the broadcast IP to give us 8190, valid hosts. In other words, IPs we can actually allocate to a router or a switch or a computer in this subnet. If we go ahead and take a look at some of the available uh, subnet masks when you subnet a class B network, here are some of them. We abbreviated at one point because there are quite a few. Um, we started off with a slash 19. I recommend if you want to start at a 17 and work your way up or start anywhere you want and apply the formulas um, just as we did in order to practice and to get more and more familiar. And again, remember the quick method of 256, and then you're going to subtract from that the interesting octet, the octet that has changed, in other words, in order to get the, um, the interval of your subnet numbers. Okay, so play around with this, and it'll start to become clearer and clearer. All right, well, again, congratulations. You made it to the end of this video. To summarize what we talked about, you really need to understand the network, subnet, and host bits when you're looking at a subnet mask. If you understand that structure, you'll be able to subnet anything. We talked about some of our formulas again, how to figure out the number of subnets, how to determine the range of the subnet or the size, and then how to figure out the size of the subnet in terms of IPs you can actually allocate, in other words, the valid hosts. Again, that means subtracting one for the subnet number and one for the broadcast address. All right, so that is subnetting class A and class B networks. Practice, practice, practice. Thanks for watching.